Okay, so here is a function, f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x minus 5. And here are some examples of stuff that you can be asked to find. f of 2, f of negative 1, f of 0. If you're struggling with this stuff, then keep watching, because today I'm going to explain how to calculate these and how to do some other operations with functions, like multiplication and division. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I will also show you a special operation that you can do with functions. All right, let's go. G'day guys, this is the math base. Now before I explain how we're going to do those calculations, let's just talk a little bit about how functions even work in the first place. So on the right hand side, we have negative x squared plus 3x minus 5. This is known as the rule. In other words, it tells you how to do something. And that something is for the stuff on the left hand side, f of x. That is known as the function name or as I like to call it, a title. Here's an example of a title. So here's a book that's been written by the same author as Lord of the Rings. The title informs us of which book you would like to read or borrow from the library. In other words, it's a really easy way to reference what you're looking for in general, instead of just trying to explain to you every single word in the book itself or every single chapter, I can just refer to it as the title. Now, if you go to the table of contents, this tells you where to find each specific chapter. In a sense, you could think of this as a rule. So for example, if I wanted to go to chapter 5, I will need to turn to page 80. Alright, so page 80, here we go. And we can basically start reading the entire chapter from here, right? This can be considered like a result, right? That this is what we wanted to get to, some kind of outcome. In the context of a function, the outcome we'd be looking for is for something specific like f of 2. You can think of 2 as a particular chapter that you're trying to get to, and the outcome would be the page number that you need to figure out. So if I want to go to chapter 5, I need to go to page 80. If I want to go to chapter 2, I need to go to page 27 or something. So now that we understand what we're looking at in terms of the equation, let's dive into how to calculate this stuff. So first up we have f of 2. The 2 is saying that x is currently equal to 2. So what you want to do is replace all the x's in your rule with 2. When you do all the operations and calculations for this, we will find that the result is negative 3. This is known as a y value, which means when x is 2, y is negative 3, which means we have a coordinate. You could write the coordinate as 2, f of 2, but eh, nobody really writes it that way. It's, it's not really going to give you enough information. Although you can expect stuff like that in a question, and so you would have to work that out to get... 2 comma negative 3. So we can conclude and say f of 2 is negative 3. As for f of negative 1, you'll do the same thing. Now we're going to just replace x with negative 1. Working that out brings us to a result of negative 9. So if you wanted to write a coordinate, you can say negative 1 comma negative 9. As for f of 0, we simply need to replace both the x's for 0 now, giving us a value of negative 5. And this coordinate would be written as 0 comma negative 5, right? Which means that if you were to plot this out on the Cartesian plane, this will be a y-intercept. So in general, all you really need to do is take the value from the bracket and sub it into x. It's all about subs. Speaking of subs, don't forget to subscribe to MathBase if you haven't done so yet. <laughs> Alright, so if you guys don't have any trouble with that stuff, then let's look at some operations we can do with functions. Let's say you're asked to find f of 2 plus f of negative 1 you've already found the value of f of 2. We know it's negative 3. And we've done something similar for f of negative 1. And so we can just replace those notations, those titles, for a specific outcome. So we can say it's negative 3 plus negative 9. Because remember, we're not just referring to the title of f of x anymore. We're referring to a very specific chapter, f of 2 and f of negative 1, and their respective page numbers, you could say. So negative 3 plus negative 9 gives us negative 12. So how about 2 times f of 0? Or 2f of 0 means the same thing. f of 0 is negative 5. So all we need to do is replace that bit for negative 5 and multiply by 2, giving us negative 10. And this last one, f of 2 over f of 0, looks a little bit difficult, but it's really not. It's just the same process as before. All you need to do is replace f of 2 for the value negative 3 and replace f of 0 for negative 5 giving us 3 over 5 when you simplify it. So if you guys have made it this far in the video, well done to you. I'm going to now talk about a little special operation that you can do with functions. 
And here's what it looks like. F of F of 2. It's a bit like that movie, Inception. So you got something inside something. You could say this is a composite operation. It kind of looks impossible to do, but it's really quite straightforward. F of 2 is negative 3, right? So just replace that for that outcome. Now we have F of negative 3. And from here, you just rinse and repeat what you've been doing this whole time, just putting in negative 3 where all the x's are. Work that out and we'll get negative 23. So we can see that throughout this entire video, f of x was a pretty handy notation to do some quick calculations. This becomes especially useful when you have another function like g of x equal to 3x plus 2, and you want to do operations like f of 2 plus g of 1. This way you know exactly which rule is where, and you can begin to apply the calculations and substitutions accordingly with respect to each function. It's also very handy when you want to draw multiple graphs on the same set of axes. If you guys have any specific function questions you would like me to tackle and show here like a, like a work solution, let me know in the comment section below. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Oh, and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of when my next video comes out. Alright guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.